So I have the CPU in my hand right now. This is a little chip that goes inside the little hole, the little white spot on the motherboard. This is very crucial that you don't have any static on you at this point because the CPU is one of the most important parts. Any bit of static will just kill it. As you can see on the bottom, there are a lot of pins, a lot of gold pins. And there is a certain way that you have to put it inside the slot on the motherboard. I'll show that to you right now. Okay. As you can see here in this corner, there's a little arrow pointing up to the top left. As you can see on the motherboard, on the CPU, there's a little arrow here too. Uh, you might not be able to see it because I zoomed in. Hold on. Here you go. There's a little arrow here. That means it should go in like this. Go in with the arrow. Before you do this, make sure you unlock it here. There's a hatch here. Latch. Let's zoom in again. You just simply, slowly slide it in there. There, it fits in perfectly, and then you close it. And won't get, it won't move again. If you put it in there, and it's installed. That's how you install the CPU. But we're not done with the CPU yet. As you can see, there's no heat sink or fan attached to it. And this is the fan and the heat sink that came with the case, excuse me, with the CPU. And I'll be installing this right now. This is the stock fan and heat sink. Uh, you can get an upgraded one uh, for a better, I guess, for better um, cooling. You can get water cooling systems as well, but this one will do for now, for a demonstration. As you can see here, there are two little latches here. And this side and this side will go in properly. The heatsink already has a, has a little glue thing in there. I, it protects the CPU from getting overheated a little bit more. Let's just do this. That. On the opposite side, you can't see it, but I'm making sure this the metal thing goes around that. And on this side, I'm making sure it's around here actually. So you have a better view of this. I'll move the camera. Here. Once it's secured, you can lock it in place. Okay, I have both in and make sure you lock it. You just pull this all the way and it's locked in. And there is your full CPU installed. Uh, there's a wire coming out of the fan. Of course, it powers it. It goes into the motherboard. You can find it right next to the CPU here. There's a slot for you. Just push it in there. There's a slot here. Make sure it goes in through the slot. Otherwise, you might, you might break the pins. There we go, and it's installed properly. There is your CPU installation. Next thing I'm gonna show you is the RAM. So excuse me while I go. Okay, so I am back with the RAM, and the RAM slots are here, the blue and black. There are four slots, you can put up to four of them. This motherboard can handle up to 16 gigabytes, I believe. They go in right there. And in my hand, I have the ADA two gigabyte RAM. I have two of them actually, so that's four gigabytes. I'll be installing both of them right now. As you can see, there are pins on the bottom, and one side has more pins than the other. This tells you which way to align them. If you look on the mother on the case here, there are there's a slot there. I believe you can see it on the blue. There's a slot here. It tells you which way to install it. So I'm going to install this. The the one with the lower pins go up upwards. I'm going to put this in there. Make sure. The two clips are open. Put this in there. You slide it in straight. Don't try to bend it. Don't try to force it in if it doesn't go in. And you just clip it in. There we go. This is installed. I'm going to do the same for the next one. It doesn't matter which two you select, which slots, they'll, they should both go in properly. Just fine as long as everything is lined up. Doing this together, just clip it in, and they're both locked in. 
Just make sure you don't force it in. Make sure if it doesn't if it doesn't go in, don't try to force it in. Don't try to bend it. Uh, you might break the hard uh, the memory, or you might end up bending the motherboard as well. So now that we have the memory, that's how you install the memory, and it should be fine now. There's nothing else you need to do. The memory is one of the easiest parts to install, in my opinion. You just slide it in there. The next is the next easiest is the graphics card. I showed you how to install the graphics card a few weeks ago on, actually a few months ago on YouTube as well, where I, when I upgraded my own graphics card. But here I'll show you how to install it and it's going to go here. It's a PCIe 2.0 slot and I'm going to have to un unscrew one of these. So to make sure which one will go through, I'm going to go get the graphics card. Okay, so I have the graphics card in hand. This is the EVGA G4 GT2220. I tried to get a better card, but as I explained in the first video, my budget was a little low by the time I bought the graphics card, so I couldn't get anything better. Uh, as you can see, it has a slot here. You can match it with the part on the motherboard if you don't know it by heart. Uh, in this case, there's two slots for it, so I can actually set up an SLI with this, but I obviously didn't have the money to get a better graphics card, so I can't get a two graphics card. So um, first thing you want to do is make sure you want to see like if it if it installs here which slot on the back you're gonna have to take out. And in this case, it's gonna be the third one from the top. So I'm just going to unscrew that. You should keep these slots just in case you're gonna have to install them, reinstall them again later if you get a better graphics card or you don't need the slot anymore. Now keep the screw in hand. You're gonna have to screw the graphics card in there. Once we have that, we put it in there. It goes in the slot perfectly. You just slide it down straight. Don't bend it. Don't try to force it in if it doesn't go in. And it's stuck. See? The latch caught on. But as you can see, it's a little... It moves. So to stabilize it, you should... You have to screw, screw it back in. me right here screw this back in on this end and this is once again the slot that I took out you can save this you can throw this out a drill doesn't matter but I prefer to save these and the graphics card is fully installed it doesn't move as much and there's your graphics card installed since it's not a big graphics card it won't need a feed from the power source directly like the one I showed you in my other video but this is pretty good a run I tested this out already and it's a pretty good graphics card for what I wanted to do with it anyway and that's your graphics card right now you can install another one in the slot below you have a few PCI slots and that's about it for the graphics card uh, the next one what other parts do I have left I guess that's it I guess uh, we're gonna have to do the wiring now uh, it's gonna be a little tricky. I have all the power source wires here. I have case wires here, the fan wires here, case wires. I have another fan wire here and I have some SATA cables for the hard drive and the DVD drive up here. So stay tuned while I get all the cables. Okay, I have all my wires right now. I have the two SATA cables for the SATA hard drive and the SATA DVD drive. And the first thing I'm going to install to get out of the way is this little case fan. It's over here, it doesn't connect directly to the power source, in fact, instead it connects to the motherboard. And there's a slot for it up here, I don't think you can see that. Right here. This white slot, uh, there's a slot here, you, you just push it in there, it goes in just like the CPU. It, it's actually the same connection, so it's a similar connection, it's a smaller connection and it goes in there perfectly fine and this fan will start working this fan however on the top has connections that connect directly into the power source you can tell because these are big connections and they fit with the power source right here They're the same but I'll worry about that later on the first thing I want to do is get the case fan the case power cables out of the way connect them to the motherboard since they're coming in from the top, this is the first time um, I'm dealing with a case fan that's coming in 
seen the case cables that are coming in from the top and a power source coming in from the bottom. It's just a little confusing for me as well. There's a SATA cable here as well. I guess it connects directly into the motherboard. And these are USB. On the case, inside the case actually, there are... Here you go, on the bottom. Here there are slots labeled USB. You probably can't see it properly. Let me try to zoom in. There, as you can see it says USB. USB 1, 2, and 3. You just slide it in there. Slide it in any two of them. Make sure they're lined up properly. I'm going to do this in 2 and 3 so you can see it properly. Oh wait, these are the HD audio and the... I guess these are for the the case slots for the... Um, you know, you can put your 3mm three, three um, jacks for your, from your iPod, um, you know, your headphones. You just plug it in, it goes... There is a slot for audio on here. Right here, it's right above the power source. It connects right in there. I'm going to connect it and I'm going to show you. Hold on. Just get ready for my camera drops. There we go, and it's connected here. You just slide it in there. Uh, there's no new reason to force it in. Uh, this cable doesn't need to go in there. You can just leave it out there. And these are still the USB cables. Uh, they sh there should be some right here. These are the USB cables from the case itself. These go straight into the USB slots here. Uh, there's only one here, so make sure you line it up properly. And if you slide it in, it goes in perfectly. There you go, that's the USB for the case. You have a SATA cable here from the uh, from the case as well. You can put it inside one of the SATA cables, SATA slots on top. Right here. It's behind this thing. These are SATA cables. Make sure it lines up. You just plug it in there. Just get the wires out of the way. You can handle um, rewiring to make it a little look a little prettier later on. But right now I'm just going to leave it down like this. Here you have the BIOS uh, battery, the CMOS battery. Make sure you don't touch that yet. And if you want to reset the CMOS later on, you can do that by taking it out for a few minutes and then putting it back in. Uh, we're not done with the case. We still have a few more cables left. These are a little harder to know where they go in. Uh, the motherboard should come with the manual. And it and this one does. I've already looked at it. Uh, power cables. I will tell you where they go in a minute.